the federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act. A few weeks ago, thousands of big rig truck drivers drove into Awada, Canada, to protest against Canadian Wooflu mandates. It's been dubbed the Freedom Convoy, and to date has been peaceful on all fronts. Soon after their arrival the Prime Minister of Canada Justin Trudeau was reported to be suffering from the Wu flu, and he went into an undisclosed location. Some say he was hiding from the Freedom Convoy. After resurfacing the Prime Minister made claims against the truckers that haven't been proven to be true and from all looks of things, the opposite is the case. We are not intimidated by those who hurl insults and abuse at small business workers and steal food from the homeless. We won't give in to those who fly racist flags. We won't cave to those who engage in vandalism or dishonor the memory of our veterans. There is no place in our country for threats, violence, or hatred. So to those responsible for this behavior, it needs to stop. What particularly has occurred of a significant nature we went after the funding. Our efforts combined with the city's efforts eliminated the GoFundMe. $10 million are no longer accessible to the demonstrators. There are other funding avenues that we continue to aggressively go after through intelligence, information, coordination with financial institutions, and all three levels of government. We will be relentless in pursuing the funding that has enabled this demonstration to continue to this point. $10 million in donations were raised for the convoy on the site GoFundMe. GoFundMe said it cut off funding for the organizers, because it had determined the effort violated the site's terms of service due to unlawful activity. After much backlash GoFundMe decides to make full refunds to everyone that participated. Members of his parliament had questions for him, and a conservative Canadian parliamentarian slammed Prime Minister Justin Trudeau as she condemned him for refusing to talk with hundreds of truckers demonstrating towards the nation's vaccine mandate. All Canadians want to see a leader who will work to heal rifts, not further divide. A leader who will listen, even to those voices he might not agree with. A leader who will work to understand, not dismiss, name call and gaslight. Contrary to some, there are thousands of passionate, patriotic and peaceful Canadians on the Hill right now who just want to be heard. Will the Prime Minister extend an olive branch, and will he listen? Meanwhile judges ruled that honking horns was illegal, orders were given to officers to confiscate gas cans that were being used to keep the truckers fueled and funds being raised on the site GiveSendGo were blocked. We're going after any vehicle conveyance, including horseback, people carrying jerry cans. We are arresting and seizing, and we are interdicting fuel going into the demonstrations. Keeping us safe, you didn't know. Keeping us safe, keeping all those jerry cans out of our hands, just in case, you know? In case we're able to stay warm. How are the trucks supposed to leave if they have no fuel? Over the last four days, in addition to those operations, they will continue on to be clear. We have been seeking additional resources provincially and federally, and of course, municipally. Now the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has invoked the nation's Emergencies Act. The government has invoked the Emergencies Act to supplement provincial and territorial capacity to address the blockades and occupations. The true use and reach of these powers are yet to be seen. The government has stated that they will be used to stop the Freedom Convoy, including going after people supporting the movement financially and strengthen the police's ability to impose fines and even imprisonment for protesters. 
In my opinion, the Canadian government has blurred the line between peaceful protest and illegal occupations. One thing is for sure, that these protesters are doing their best to make change without burning down buildings, looting businesses, violence against others while the government is increasingly using force to get its way. The lesson here is that protesting of any kind against the government will continue to get harder and harder to do. I've cried several times. These people here are paid by us, we're not paid by them. So they should be listening to us. I, my business has not been interrupted by any of what's been going on with the protest. I am a full supporter of the protest because I've actually taken the time to come down and speak to these people, get to know them, get to know why they're here and hear their stories, which is what a lot of people aren't doing. And I believe that most people that are just put spewing out hate and all this ugly language towards these truckers, those are the people who are staying at home and not making the effort to come downtown and talk to these people. So we said, you know what, let's go out. Let's talk to all of our neighbors from across the country. And so far, every single person we have met has just met us with so much love, so much understanding, mm -hmm. so much peace. And they made me cry so many times just hearing their incredible stories for what they're fighting for. No, I think it's uh, he's just really making a mockery out of himself more than anybody else. His people have eyes. What he's portraying is this. That's not where we're going. Right? We're here. I've seen lots of kids around. That has no problems, right? He's a racist himself, right? There's no racism going on here. He said many times publicly that he supports peaceful protest, uh, but except I guess when it disagrees with what he believes or what narrative that he's discussing for any leader of a country to vilify people for exercising their democratic right, their right to protest, the right to demonstrate peacefully. Those are my thoughts. What are yours? Leave them in the comments below. Please share this video for education and awareness. For the Dumb Dumb News channel, I'm Dumb Dumb.